My work is directly relevant uh, to the theme of this uh, workshop that I've worked on European Islamophobia, the racist discourses, and I've collected the data and I've talked and developed a framework for analyzing, situating, and explaining the European Islamophobia. However, the same uh, framework can be utilized, can be uh, situated to understand the Canadian uh, form of Islamophobia. Islamophobia, the one that the people they are talking about here and the one which is often referred to, it is limited to uh, mosque vandalism. It is uh, uh, referred to this abusive or discriminatory practices that the people, they have, the Muslim community. But when we compare this one, I mean, of course, all these things are present in the Europe in, in Europe, and the European Islamophobia is marked by this the whole thing. However, one more thing is that it is more uh, institutionalized Islamophobia, that the state, in fact, has got uh, certain uh, say, uh, the practices which, uh, in a way, in, in, in many ways, uh, promote Islamophobia. In, in, in Europe. For example, in, in Germany, when we talk about, so Germans, they do not have this, the kind of this idea of the citizenship based on this, uh, say, uh, in, in, the, in the absence of race. So German citizenship was always based on race and culture. So if you do not have the German blood uh, in your veins, you will not be accepted as uh, a citizen. And if you look at the terms that they have been using, it was initially Auslander, uh, a guest worker, a uh, guest arbeiter that they talked about. Then they talked about Auslanders. The third one they uh, talked about it is uh, Auslanders mit migration hinterground, migration background. And today, when they talk about the citizen, they say it mit a fellow citizen, not a complete citizen. So you can always be regarded as a Pakistani German or a Syrian German, which perhaps in the case of Canada would not be an official term to talk about or to refer to. So institutionalization on one hand is this, that you have different terms or the names to talk about, to, to, to denote different citizens. The secondly, it is all about uh, surveillance, monitoring, um, profiling that we find in Europe. And the Muslim communities, they feel themselves uh, the subject of this, uh, this, this kind of racism or the Islamophobia. And the timing of this workshop is very um, significant. If we look at, and the one that talk uh, that was mentioned here, it was about the president-elect uh, Donald Trump in America. And of course, the American policies definitely influenced the Canadian. And it is not only, uh, I mean, the state-to-state -state relations, American media and American social attitude. These are some of the other, these are exported or, uh, I mean, uh, uh, transported to Canada as well. And the Canadian society is influenced by this discourse. So on one hand, we see this, the global discourse about a uh, global discourse about Islamophobia. Secondly, this the North American case where the Americans, they are talking about uh, this, the Islamophobia uh, thing. And then we look at this, the Canadian situation, which is slowly changing or deteriorating towards uh, this, the racist attitude. So that makes this workshop and the whole uh, idea very relevant and significant. And it is very important to have these workshops on regular basis with these professionals who have come here uh, so that they may be uh, sensitized 
to that subject as well as they are given the training uh, in understanding that what's going on not only in Calgary or Alberta but around the world.